Hi there, Vince here from My Mate Vince, and we're back again on Brian's boat. And in this episode today, hopefully, we're going to get the horn working. So when you do the horn switch, nothing happens whatsoever. Now, you do actually have to have a horn working because it's, uh, it's a safety thing. Now, if you check this out here, we have a little switch that says horn here. And on other ones, when you push them up, a little red light comes on. So if I go into blower, can you see a little red light comes on on the horn? It's not doing anything. Now, it's on a kind of return, it, you know, so it's just like, you know, burr, burr type thing. So uh, there's a, a hand air horn thing here instead. But it'd be nice to get this one working. So that's what we're going to try and do. Now, luckily, there is a little diagram here. And if you have a look, it says horn here. And it says B. B means black because there's a little colour code here. And I presume these are going to be all the negatives because you see they're all tied together on all the different switches. But then if we come across here, can you see it says BRG. Now BR is brown and G is green. So we need to find, because I don't even know where the horn is on this boat, but hopefully by the switch, because this must be the switch here, we're going to find a, a brown and green wire. And then from there it goes up and it goes into brown and green again into a 10 amp fuse. And I know the fuse, uh, fuses are going to be good because I changed them in a previous episode when we were working on the trim tab. So all the fuses are up here and they've been replaced. They're all up here. So I think what we need to do is maybe try to undo this and start working from the switch back or even just get underneath here with the torch and see if we can find the brown and green wire. All right, if you have a look here, you can just, we think that's the horn just on the outside there. Now I know it's probably more than likely it's something outside because that's where all the elements are hitting it, but why is the little light not coming on? You think if the horn was faulty, would it still not come on here? So that's why I'm thinking it's more switch related. Should I have a look up here, see if I can see the back of the switch. So there's one at the very top. I'm gonna see what's going on. Ah, right, okay. I can see, I think, I think it's just a broken wire. It actually looks like it's been cut. Let me get the camera and try to show you. Right, so the switches are up the very, very, very top there. And I can just see on the horn one that it looks like there's a brown wire and I think a blue wire, I can't quite make it out. But the brown wire comes down and it comes to, looks like one side of it here. Oh, another wire just uh, just here, where's it gone? So my hands here. So I don't know why that's been cut unless it was putting a fault on it. Or, I just don't understand that. I mean, what's that doing there? That's just cut as well. So yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of I don't knows. So really we should have, I presume we should have voltage. Would we have voltage here or voltage on that other wire? That's, uh, that's just hanging loose here. Now annoyingly, I can't find my multimeter, so I must have left it at home. But Brian's got one, but I don't think he's got batteries in, so we're gonna see if we can get some batteries for it. And then, because uh, really we need to measure voltage here. Right, it's incredibly hard to show you, but basically a lot of this is non-standard. You see these like blue connections here, and you can see that there's just another cut wire here. So this was obviously something was teed into, and I think maybe the horn was teed into in order to put a relay to then feed something else possibly because all of this just just doesn't look like it doesn't look like standard wine it looks like aftermarket stuff so uh, yeah I can't get to the other side of this very comfortably I'm trying to take a ground I found a nice little negative up here it's so hard to show you but I found a negative there that I can take and uh, I am getting voltage readings when I go across here but I can't get to the other wire from the switch and then I think the switch needs to be turned on in order to pass the 12 volts through I think, but I'm not too sure. I think what I'm going to do is try to just extend the wiring out here so we can work on the floor. My oh my, it's a little bit of a mess under there because there's been sort of like aftermarket stuff done and it's just like sutter tape, cable ties, relays, everything going on. So what I've done is I've just undone the horn from here because there's just no room to work. So undone the horn and that basically just dropped the switch through, right the way through, which is good. Really easy to undo these. You just need to undo this thing here. It's like a plastic little nut and then they just drop through. 
and I cut some cable ties and this is what I'm left with even this here this is all there uh, you know, this is just all aftermarket stuff so I don't really know what's going on but these were the two wires that I was talking about the one coming out of the switch here was right next to this one here but I am struggling a little bit with this multimeter I can't believe I left my one at home uh, I just I can't find any 12 volts anywhere near here the other thing that's hard is trying to get a, a negative like I'm trying to get a negative from an earth block inside here it's not like a car where you just go onto a piece of bodywork I can't seem to get a because uh, it's just all plastic fiberglass everywhere I can't seem to easily get a negative unless I'm doing something wrong so I'm going to try to get my head around this little relay here with the diagram on it and see if I can work out what's happening I mean I don't even know if this relay is actually doing anything now because look it did do something at one stage we've got this here but uh, you know this blue wire here is disconnected so I'm thinking whatever used to maybe be up here they might have decided to feed from the horn circuit possibly I'm just trying to get my head around at the moment now obviously I've got the uh, battery off at the moment because I've been dealing with these wires so I want to see if this switch is working so let's go to ohms I don't think this has a uh, continuity with a beep no okay right so that's doing something there let's go on to this one here and that's doing something so it's short in between the blue and the brown but not the brown and the brown Right, okay, rather than getting more and more confused here, I think we're just going to go from the, the horn back. So if you have a look at the horn here, look at the wire that's going in. It's kind of rubberized. It looks like old bell wire. So uh, that hole does kind of correspond to in here, sort of. So I'm thinking if I shine the light through here, I might be able to see the wire. If I can find the wire, then I think I'm going to be halfway, uh, halfway there. Because really, all the horn needs is 12 volts to work. I mean, according to this, it's not going through a relay. So, uh, you know, if we can just, I don't know, if we can find the 12, I think if we can find that, we'll be closer to being able to work out what the problem is. Right, okay, I've shined the light in here and basically this flex cable here connects on to that wire. There's just a little taped up joint just in here. I'll try to show it to you. I'm just gonna have to put the camera on its side. Can you see uh, there see the wire comes in and there's got a tape joint there see where the wire comes in through the, the wall and then uh, it's a taped up joint and it's connected onto this one so 100% this one is the horn so uh, now that we've got that all we have to do is work out where the 12 volt supply is and then I think we would be able to get our head around here I was looking around here wondering where this feed comes from and I noticed here we have a wire with a bit of red tape around it and this one is brown and green and look it looks like there used to be something connected to it but now something's pulled out of there but we do have 12 volts on here so what I've done is just to make life easier I've got a wire here that goes back to the engine block so if I could take the ground from there the negative and if I go onto this connector here you can see that we have Oh, the battery's off at the moment, I'll just get the battery on. There you go, you see we've got 13 volts there. What I'm thinking is, this is the bit that's confusing me, I can't quite get my head around how the switch is working in relation to the relay, but these two wires were very close to each other, so maybe these two need to touch each other, and then uh, this wire here, the blue wire that's taped up, goes to the live, and then I'm thinking, the live is going to be connected to that side of the relay. When these two go, it must then energize the relay, which then puts the power through to the horn. But I don't really know. So the battery's off at the moment. I think I'm going to just try to touch this one up here and then see. I suppose worst case scenario is going to be that the fuse blows and uh, we've got plenty of fuses. So let's just balance this all in here and see if that's going to... I presume maybe that was on there originally. Don't even know if the weight's going to take that. Let me put that in here instead. Hope everything doesn't go bang. Uh, that's connected there. I think we might be ready to go. So I'm going to get Brian to. Uh, I'll do it. Shall I just do it really quickly, or turn it on and see if nothing happens? Then you activate the horn. Yeah, you just turn it on and we'll see what happens. Okay, it's on. Right. So nothing's blown up yet. 
Let's see now, is this going to do anything? No. Right, just thinking about it, surely for the switch down here to work, it has to go to ground. So right now we have actually got 12 volts on the, uh, I think the blue wire and the brown wire. And when we, when we do it, this, it is putting 12 volts through. So you might be able to just see that. If I hold this here, can you see we've got 12 volts? If I hold this here, we've got nothing. And when I do the switch, can you see we've got 12 volts? Now let's go into this one here and see if we've got 12 volts. I'm going to hold it here. We've also got 12 volts. So what's that about? Surely to make the circuit, one of these has to go to has to go to ground. Does that need to go in here and go into the ground there? I wonder. Let's see now, is it going to do anything? Oh my god, wow. did you hear that? Yes, is the light coming on? And the light's coming on. Unbelievable. Right, okay, let's just try to recap. So, for the horn to work, we need 12 volts positive and negative. Yep. But it needs to go through the relay. So basically, we have our 12 volts from the wiring loom coming down here. And that goes into that part of the relay there and travels down into the switch here. We then have the switch grounded on that side, that part of the relay, and then that switch has the 12 volts which goes into that side. So when you do it there, the 12 volts must go from the wiring loom via the blue wire through the brown wire here which goes through the coil down to ground. And then this side here takes the positive then off to the relay and I just don't know what this is for here there's like a, a spade terminal here and this that goes off to feed something else I don't know what that's about so hold on is that done safely or have I done that wrong I mean it is working now and the lights coming on here yeah not too sure but I'm wondering if that's how it was originally I'll tell you what we we'll do just to see if I was to take out these and just do just do this one, would it still switch? I presume not. Yes, it will. Will the light come on? Nah, so the light doesn't come on. So you need that for the light. So now if I take this out here, I presume it's not gonna work. But the light comes on. Well, that's nice. So that's probably what's confused me. You see this light's coming on here? I don't know whether you can even see that or not. Right, so, is that the wiring done and how can we neaten it up? So 100%, something's been teed into somewhere because for example, we have this here, which is now live. So obviously they've used a the horn circuit to feed something else, but I think it was quite believable that this blue wire went up into here because we had a bit of tape around it and you can see that we have a spade connector with nothing on it. But these two things were worrying me. They look close to each other, but yet when we put them together, it doesn't work. They need to go to ground and I was wondering where that could be, but check this out. When I first fall, when I first fall was working on it, the two wires were just hanging loose and you see this big chocolate block terminal here you can already see that one wire looks like it's come out of that one i'm not touching that one now that will be for uh we need to find out what's not working before we worry about that but you see that middle terminal there that middle terminal is ground i've just got my multimeter and 100 percent that is like negative yeah so they came out of there so that's where they took the ground from because i was thinking on that little experiment that i did just now we took the ground from here but if you look at this one here, it's not actually, there's no room for those wires to have come out of. So that's what they've done. They took the ground from the bigger chocolate block terminal up there. So I think what we're going to do is we're just going to try to neaten this up a little bit. And uh, yeah, hopefully we've got the wiring right. I know the color code and everything is wrong, but uh, I think for the time being, because we haven't got the correct color wires, haven't even got the correct real equipment to do this right now, but we're just going to try to make it a little bit better than now, and it can be addressed at a later stage.
Okay, so it's far from ideal, but we're just gonna fix it up now with what we have and also reduce some of the connections because there's some bits of wire here that are like 50 centimeters long and yet there will be four different connections on that length of wire where it's just been spliced and teed into time after time. So uh, yeah, a, a proper job needs to be done with the correct color coded wire and also with the correct terminals because a lot of these spay terminals are exposed. So I'm just taping them up with insulation tape to make them more waterproof. But if we can reduce the wire in a bit, it will be easy to change over then at a later stage. So that's what we're doing in this part of the video. Well, that's certainly a lot less wiring than there was before. That looks under strain now, but it won't be when this switch is all the way up here. And then when it relays cable tied to something, you can see there, it's all gonna be tucked up away there. So yeah, it's gonna be a lot easier to understand now when looking up there. Quite happy with that. And you can see it's all been uh, insulated now. Right, I'm just balancing underneath here. So this is all the wiring here now with the uh, new relay. So what I, what we did is we weren't sure where it was coming from because there's a few brown with green wires. For example, this is brown and green, but it's actually coming from the top top left there, the third one down. But there was a 30 amp fuse in, and it says in the manual it should be a 10 amp fuse. So what we've done is we've taken a 30 out and we've put a 10 amp in, but we've made a note that it used to be a 30. Maybe whatever they wired up before if they use this to power something else, maybe they change it to a 30. But we put it back to a 10 because that's what it says in the manual. And if you do the horn now, Brian will do the horn. You can hear that. But now watch this. If I take out this one here, which is the third one, and do it again. And now there's nothing. So it's definitely this fuse here. And now pop it back in one second, Brian. Pop it back in and do it again. There we go. So that is it for this video. Not the best because it was kind of trying to fix up non-original stuff and it needs to be done better because the wiring color code's not standard. But the thing is, the horn wasn't working and the horn's working now and it's working consistently as well, which is good. So, and the little light comes on so you might be able to see it more clearer now. There you go. If you spotted any mistakes, please add it to the comments down below because, you know, not 100% confident that that is all correct, but I'm just hoping and stuff, the relay and stuff was done correctly. So that is it for this video. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up and hopefully we'll be able to do more videos on the boat in the future. Thanks so much for watching.